Okay, so to make the game a little bit more interesting, what we're going to do is that we're going to create a countdown time. So if the countdown gets to zero, then that means that we lost. And if we eat all of the enemies before the countdown, the countdown time gets to zero, that means that we won. So to create the, count the countdown timer, let's go here to the hierarchy and right click and we will create a UI. So select UI canvas. So once you create the UI canvas, you will see that a canvas object appears and an event system object appears. If you double click the canvas, you will zoom to the canvas. So this is the canvas. And what we're going to do is that we're going to make some changes to the canvas. Here in inspector, you can see that the canvas has different fields. So here's in the here in the UI scale mode, we're going to select, we're going to change this constant constant pixel size to a scale with screen size. Then we're going to type in here 6 900 by 600 and we're going to go here to the game here where it says to the game view and here where it says free aspect we're going to click here and we're going to change it to three by two so we have a determined uh, aspect ratio or res game resolution and this is going to be the resolution that we're going to be working with and um, what we're going to do uh, now is that here in the canvas uh, scaler we're going to set the screen match mode to 0 0.5 so set it to 0 0.5 like this and now we're going to right click here in the canvas object in the hierarchy and we're going to create a ui and ui and let's select text all right so let's call this text uh, countdown rename the text to ca to ca uh, countdown let me type it correctly countdown like this we will change the text of the countdown to zero then we will we will increase the size so increase it like this you can hover the mouse over here and you can just drag to the right to increase the size and the alignment of the paragraph let's center the alignment of the paragraph and here where it says horizontal overflow let's change this to overflow in both fields so like that and now what we can do is select the countdown select w and here in the scene we can zoom in and just drag our uh, countdown timer to the top like this we can also change the color of a countdown of the countdown by going here to the to the color clicking here and changing it to white and we can also add a shadow to make it look better so here click add component and let's choose shadow so search for shadow click enter and here you have the effect distance so you can drag you can hover over here the mouse and you can drag to the right so if you zoom in you can see that we got we are making here like a shadow so you can play around with this so you create a nice shadow effect all right perfect so now what we have to do is that we need to create a script for this countdown object so let's go here to the project view right click select create and let's select c sharp script let's rename this script to countdown so capital c countdown let's go back because uh something happened click here in the countdown script to open it Okay, so now you can see that here we have uh, the countdown script. So we need to edit this script. So first of all, what we want to have is a reference to the text component of this object. So what we want to do is that if you select the countdown, we want to get a reference to this text component over here. So to do that, inside the script, we're going to say text. But if we type in text, nothing appears. And this is because we need to add in a Unity library. So let's add this library that we need. We need the UI library. So using Unity Engine dot UI like this. So now we can use the data type text, and now we can set. We can uh, say text, and we can say countdown, countdown text like this. And now we have a reference to the countdown text. Inside the start method, we can say countdown text equals get component. And then we open and close this, this symbol over here. And then we say uh, text because we want to get the text component like this. Then we open and close parentheses. This is the way you can access, you can reference a component of the game object that this script is attached to. This script is attached to the countdown object. So this script will be attached to this object and we will, we will be accessing this text component because we want to edit this text field over here. 
Okay, so now one other thing that we need in our countdown script is a timer. So let's declare a timer. Let, let's declare the timer. Let's say float timer. So here we have declared our timer. And another thing that we will need is the number of seconds for the countdown. So the number of seconds is going to be 20. So int countdown number equals 20 like this. So the countdown number is going to be 20. So the countdown is going to go from 20 to 0. So now that we have that here in the update, what we're going to do is that in each frame, we're going to update the timer. And when timer is greater than 1, which means, so we're going to up, update the timer, uh, adding time dot delta time to the timer. So we're going to say timer plus equals time dot delta time. This means that that we're going to be adding a fraction of a second so one divided by 60 or 57 i don't know how many frames there, there is going to be in one second but uh, we, we will be adding this amount of seconds to timer and when timer is greater than one greater or equal to one that means that one second has passed so if timer is greater or equal than one this means that one second has passed so if one second has passed we want to take away one from countdown timer so countdown timer or countdown number minus minus it's countdown number sorry so our countdown number is going is going to decrease by one and then we're going to we're going to set the text so the countdown text dot text to our countdown number so countdown text dot text because we want to access the field the text field of the in, in inspector remember equals countdown number to string because we need to we need to transform our number that is an integer this is an integer and we need to transform it to a string so we can assign it to our countdown text and the last thing we need to do is to reset our timer so if our timer is greater or equal to one that means that one second has passed we're going to do this and then we're going to say timer is equal to zero Okay, so we are done with this, but there's one last thing that we need to do. And inside uh, this condition, we can see that every time that timer is greater than one, we're gonna go in here and we're going to take away one from countdown number and we're gonna show this in the text. Okay, but uh, what if timer, what if countdown number is equal to zero? Then this is gonna keep going because there is no condition that stops this from going on and on and on and on forever. So we're gonna type in here another condition. So this is an AND this uh this what this operand operator does is that it checks for two conditions to be true so this condition needs to be true and this other condition also needs to be true so we're going to type in here that countdown number is greater than zero so if timer is greater or equal to one and countdown number is greater than zero so if countdown number is equal to one then we're gonna enter and execute this code and now countdown number is gonna be equal to zero so we're going to just print uh, show the zero to the in the text and then the next time that we try to to come in then count the countdown is going to be equal to zero and this is going to this is going to be false so this condition is going to be false and we're not going to enter in here so we have that done now over here in the start method when we uh, get a reference to the countdown text we want to say that uh, the countdown text dot text is equal so at the start of the game we want to set the text equal to countdown number so countdown number dot to string okay so now everything is set now we have to go back to the unity editor uh, don't forget to to select our countdown object and add the countdown script so add component countdown script because if not this countdown is not going to work then save and hit play and now you can see that we have our countdown. Let's make the game seem bigger. We have our countdown running. So, so we need to try and eat and kill all of the enemies before the countdown comes down to zero. So let's try and do it. Let's try to see if we can actually make it on time. I think we can. It looks like we can. And if we kill off the enemies, I think we killed every single enemy before the countdown finished. So it should print out something like U1 or something like that. But we'll do that in the next video.